So in this video, we're gonna show you how to build a perfect backswing, one where you will guaranteed never hit another bad shot or Sean will send you a check. We're gonna show you how to build a perfect backswing to give you every chance to hit the ball better, farther, straighter than what you're doing right now. We're gonna do that by showing you how to get the body in the right place, how to move the arms to get them in the right place, and then ultimately getting the club in the right place at the finish of your backswing. Step one is getting the body moving correctly to create this perfect backswing. The main thing is, understanding how the shifting of the body works as you're turning, right? I think people- Wait, get, wait, wait, now, they both happen at the same time? They do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, but you can separate them. Absolutely. In your mind. So, the way we like to think about it is a shift, then a turn, and then a shift back, and that's the top of your backswing. There's two shifts in the backswing. Right. And I think that's something that people have a hard time getting their head around. If you've seen any Dr. Kwan's videos, he's kind of made this popular recently, mm -hmm. but he's right on the money. There's absolutely a shift, there's absolutely turn, but the secret of that is there's also a second shift. That's the one that eludes most golfers. They think that as soon as the body moves back towards the target, they need to turn on the rotation. Right. But there's a spot in there that I feel like it's real, real huge key to playing golf at a high level is this shifting back, I'm gonna exaggerate it, it's backing yourself back in with the body while you're still turned in the backswing. Huge key. Right, and that's a subtle movement. It's not, you know, one, it's not a big shift off the ball. It's just a small shift. And then two, the shift back isn't a big shift forward. Like and it's a, not a dive with the upper it's body It's just either. literally back to the center, back to recentering, boom. And if you video your swing, just put lines up beside each leg. You set up, your hips are gonna be between those two lines. At the top, you should be right back between those two lines. You know, the backswing, is over right here. This is the first third of the swing. The second third is here. This is the middle of the swing. Right. Third third, right? The <laughs> third last third, third <laughs> is to the ball. Right. So it's back, middle, hit. And once I figured that out in my head, oh, my swing got better instantly because that helps with the timing. And it's a great way to practice this is to, to break those apart. Like blending the swing parts back together is easy when the parts are good. It's difficult to learn good swing parts when they're all blended together into a mess. Yeah, yeah. I, I play piano a little bit, and I know I have to learn the right hand, learn the left hand part, right? Right. And then start to blend them, and that's how the brain learns. Right, so get yourself a setup. Make a little shift off the ball, right? There's not much turning going on in that early shift. Make your turn to about left arm parallel. Mm -hmm. Now finish your turn as you recenter. If you can do those three pieces independently, you start blending one and two, then you start blending one, two, and three, and then you've got the you got first three quarters of your golf swing right there. That's right. So it's an easy way to incorporate the shift, turn, shift into your backswing. Now let's start to add the arms to the equation. One of the problems people have is they get the idea that the arms are gonna stay pinned to the body the whole backswing or that they don't lift. Or that they don't lift. So this is zero arm movements. So there's my shift, there's my turn. There we go. That's about That's that, not a great back, that's not a perfect backswing to be in. That's arm, that's, that's, that's a no zero arms. arm motion. That's zero arms. It so we know that happen. doesn't happen in good swings. Right. So let's talk about what will happen, should happen. So by the time you get to the top, your arms are elevated. So a good way to look at the top of the backswing with the arms, the trail arm should be about level to the ground. Okay. That will give you the correct amount of arm lift. Um, and correspondingly, the left arm will be up, kind of like from down the line. It'll be on the shoulder planes or slightly above it, somewhere in, in that area. Now to do that, if I take away the turn I, that I did on the backswing and I go back to my address position, right? this is my address position with my body, right? right. That will show you that how much the arms had to move in the backswing. Now, granted, they, they, all the motion doesn't happen here. Your, your arms are kind of gradually lifting, right. right? So they stay in this classic position here that you see everybody in, kind of right here. And as the turn finishes, the arms start adding lift. And by the time they finish, they're up here, up in the air some, right? With the club propped up and uh, gives you a great spot for them to lower again, which is what they should do to get to the ball. And with everything that we're talking about in this video, there are windows, Yeah. right? We're kind of showing you right down the middle of the window. You can be a little bit over here, a little bit over there. You just want to avoid the extremes. 
And if you're one that kind of tends to want to look at the outliers, well, so-and-so doesn't do this. Look at Jim Furyk. <laughs> so-and-so doesn't do this. Well, you're looking past a few thousand golfers who do do this. And if you want to operate in those outliers, you can. more power to you. We're just showing you where the middle of the road is. And if you build this type of a backswing, you're not going to give yourself any compensations to make on the downside. Where does the club need to be? Okay, so obviously the club is the be all end all because you got to hit it with the face. Right. The face is the CEO of the whole thing. The whole thing. So the first thing you got to do is get a grip that's got the, the hands on there in a way that helps you do that okay. to get it in a good spot. So um, a good way to, to kind of figure it out is hold the club up in front of you here, grip it with your hand pretty flat, just kind of a fist. It doesn't have to be bowed or mm -hmm. anything, just kind of flat. And make sure the club face is turned away from you just a little bit. So this bit. leading edge, you don't want it level with the ground, you want it just slightly above level. Yep, exactly. Now we'll see golfers do this, Yep. and we'll see golfers do that. Yep. Those are the extremes you want to avoid. Exactly, just the hair turned away from what we would call just neutral. And we got this from our good buddy, Brian Manzella. This yep. is a great way to, we'll even have golfers when they're out there playing, who are making a grip change, it's yep. a good way to check. Hold your arm flat, wrist flat, and check your face. That's in pretty good shape. I should yep. never hit another bad shot. That'll get you uh, in a good spot as far as the grip right. and slide your right hand down. Now, the cool part about that is mentally you can kind of keep thinking about that relationship, okay? So I'm going to make my good pivot. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm swinging my arms up where they should be. And if I swing it up to the top without too much manipulation, that's the exact same relationship I had here. Right. I just... It looks different because I'm turned and, and tilted, and, tilted some, over, right. and I've cocked my wrist back a little. But a, a great way to make sure you got this thing in a good spot is I want you to be able to see the club face on this side of the shaft. So that leading edge from this camera angle is above the shaft, right? If you just draw a line straight down your shaft on video, yep. you want to see that face on the top side of the shaft as opposed to seeing that face under your shaft. Exactly. This, this is like an opening, opened position. Right. And if you start down from there, it, you're causing yourself a lot more work than, than needs to be. <laughs> that's that already a shank right there waiting to happen. Yeah, it takes a lot of work from there to hit the ball. And that's when you start introducing a lot of face rotation right. in, a, in a short period of time, which can get the ball going all over the place. So when you get, if you get this relationship here, I mean, you could even put your hand on it like this, make a level turn and kind of get in your spot. Tilt, you're good. Yeah, and the club will be somewhere between your arms. I don't want it way over this way, right? And I don't want it way over this way because if I do either of those, that's two across the line, yep. right? And the club face starts looking even more shut. The more I lay it off, the more open it starts to get, right? So somewhere between my arms here, that'll get it pretty square. And, and I'll give you one more bonus drill before we go. If you set up here like this, this, this ties it all together. Set up here like this, put the club on your shoulder, turn, get kind of recentered, and then lift your arms up and away. That gets you in an absolutely perfect spot to start down from. Okay, so that's, that's face relation to path, and it's, again, it's the CEO of the golf swing. Let's talk real briefly about the pitch of the club going back, because we'll see a lot of golfers who will take it back, hands in, club oh, yeah. head way out, face really shut, and then we'll see, of course, the opposite of that. One is not a fix for the other. And, and that's the whole problem with just playing with like positions of this. We like to use motion and use motion drills, right? right in our teaching. So the best way to figure out the backswing, once you've got a decent grip on the club, right? And you've got your posture correct, start the club forward, swing it back and put on the brakes. If you're in good position, good position, you've shifted correctly in the first part of the backswing and you've got a decent grip, that club, when you put the brakes on, is going to be dead perfect, right in line with your hands. So you're using motion to create positions, not the other way around. That's exactly right. To sum all this up, and this is a great way, if your backswing is just a mess, right, and it's just difficult to make a good backswing for you, start from square one, remove the arms and the club from the equation, and teach yourself how to move the body correctly. A little shift early, a little turn, then a little recenter as I'm still turned, okay? When you can do that well, add in the arms. Right? So you can do something like this one arm, then when you're doing that well, add in the second arm. And then lastly, now it's just a matter of holding the club and letting it swing. You don't have to fish for these positions. In fact, you'll do a lot better if you don't fish for these positions. But teach yourself this dynamic movement from the body out, and then you're gonna build that perfect backswing. If you found this video helpful and you need more help with your consistency, we wanna help you with that. 
go to the first comment below this video, you'll see a link. Click on that link, we'll take you to our number one consistency drill to help you hit the ball more solidly and more consistent every time you're out on the course.